Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Heya. I'm a nutrition science PhD and on this channel we talk about vegan nutrition, lifestyle, and materials. And today we're going to talk about a specific nutrient that's pretty important for vegans. So a vegan diet can be healthy so long as we know what are the nutrients that we need to really care about and place a little bit more focus on so that we make sure that we're planning ahead and balancing out our meals and including the foods that are going to be pretty important for us. That's why today Today, we're going to talk about omega-3 fats. Most of us probably tend to think of fish, like salmon. Salmon are a good source of omega-3 fat, and they get it from algae. But quite a lot of fatty fish can have it as well, and that's probably why a lot of countries recommend eating fish. Omega-3 fats are a type of fat, and they're essential. Essential means our body can't make it and we have to get it from our diet. Now there are a few different types of omega-3 fats, they're not all the same. The ones to keep in mind are gonna be ALA. This is basically a shorter chain of omega-3 fat and we can get it from plants. Then there's the longer chain omega-3 fats and these are called EPA and DHA. And these are the ones that are found in foods like salmon. They're also the ones that you've probably heard are in a lot of supplements. Our body can convert ALA into EPA and DHA, but this process is pretty inefficient and it varies quite a bit from person to person. So we'll talk a little bit more about how to get around that. We wanna make sure that we're including foods that are rich in ALA. Some examples are the ones that you'll see here. So it's chia seeds, flax seeds, flax oil, hemp seeds and hemp seed oil, walnuts and walnut oil, and canola oil, or in the UK, also known as rapeseed oil. And the Vegan Society actually advises vegans to cook with rapeseed oil since it is richer in omega-3 fats. The recommendation is that women should be getting 1.1 grams per day and men 1.6 grams per day. And so you'll see from the foods that we just mentioned how much ALA there is in a serving. To meet that requirement from these foods isn't that hard, so you'll see that a tablespoon of ground flax seed will get you there or even a handful of walnuts as well. We can try and get into the habit of trying to have these foods on hand and sprinkling them on our cereals, on our smoothies, in soups, on yogurts, and having them as snacks as well. Keep in mind that these recommendations though are for kind of the average person. They're not specifically for vegans. And some experts suggest that we probably need to be eating double the recommendation for the average person, but we don't yet have specific fat guidelines for vegans. And there's suggestions that we need them, but they've not been developed yet. So these are really important for the development of the brain, the eyes, the retina, our nerves, and so on. In terms of their effects on heart health, this is quite controversial. Some studies show a lot of benefits and then some not so much. And the studies that look at omega-3 fish oil supplements show pretty inconsistent findings and they spark so much debate. For example, there was a really large meta-analysis that was done in 2019. It pulled 13 different clinical trials that looked at the effects of supplementing with omega-3 fish oil compared to a placebo. And it showed that there was a protective effect from heart attacks and other cardiovascular disease type conditions. And they found that this effect was stronger the higher the dose. A year later, in 2020, the results from a study called the STRENGTH trial, which compared an omega-3 fish oil supplement with a placebo, showed no effect. And this study was really huge. It was in 13,000 people. So essentially, the jury's still out on this one and we await more data. And so what makes us a little bit more complex is that we know that vegans have lower EPA and DHA status in their body, right? Because they don't eat fish and um, take these fish oil supplements. Now, what we don't know is how clinically relevant is this? Is this really an issue and how much and why? So you could see we still don't have as much data as we would like and it's still too early to tell. But until we get to that point, is there anything that we could do to make sure that we're getting as much EPA and DHA as we can? There are some things that we can do. Firstly, like we said, we can make sure that we're trying to get more ALA. This increases our chances of actually converting ALA into the longer chain EPA and DHA in our body. 
but as we said, this conversion rate is pretty slow. The other thing we can do is we can increase our chances of improving that conversion rate. How do we do that? We need to watch how much omega-6 we're having. Okay, let's back up a second. Remember we said that ALA gets converted in our body into EPA and DHA. This is done by the specific enzyme. It's called a desaturase enzyme. Now this enzyme also is involved in another pathway that converts an omega-6 fat. This is called LA. And so if we're eating a lot of omega-6, this enzyme basically kind of gets blocked up in that other pathway. But if we watch how much omega-6 we eat, then that means we free up this enzyme to help our body convert more ALA into the longer chains. But the science hasn't come far enough for us to be able to actually make a specific recommendation of ratios. It's not so clear. But we could do simple things like, for example, prioritizing cooking with rapeseed oil as opposed to, for example, sunflower oil or corn oil. And the Vegan Society recommends limiting sunflower seeds and pumpkin seeds to about a handful a day or a quarter of a cup. And the other thing we can consider is to take an omega-3 fat algae supplement. Fish get it from there and we can go directly to the source as well. The recommendations suggest 250 milligrams per day for adults. There is evidence that shows that taking these supplements can raise EPA and DHA status in vegans. But what we don't know is clinically how much this actually matters for vegans, especially that the research even in omnivores is so conflicting. So it's just too early to tell. So basically, let's wrap up. Until we have specific fat guidance for vegans, here are the things that we could do for omega-3. We can go for ALA, short chain omega-3, plant foods, and try and get into the habit of incorporating these into our diet daily. We can also consider balancing it out with omega-6 and switching to omega-3 options where we can. There's no need to get really obsessed about this. It's better to just focus on what you can incorporate into your diet. And then we can consider taking a supplement that provides 200 to 300 milligrams of EPA and DHA from algae. This might be a good idea, but we just don't know yet for sure. I hope that this was helpful. For more videos like this, hit that subscribe button below and you might wanna check out this playlist that I made that covers more vegan nutrition tips. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.